Greetings, my friends. I want to thank you all for subscribing. I want to thank all of my channel members for supporting me in this endeavor to save pop culture. And if you are not subscribed, please consider supporting this channel. We need you. Thank you. Castle Xanadum, dark, foreboding, rising like a Memphis in a song by Toto over this savage land at the center of the earth, a changeless biosphere from prehistoric times engineered by the very alien race upon whose still functioning base I built my castle. Somehow, after 65 million years, this self-repairing and abandoned alien base is still fully functional, giving me access to all sorts of highly advanced technology. But even with all that, I wouldn't charge a family $6,000 to stay here, like Disney did once upon a time with the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel. Assuming they could find their way to my hidden lair and get past the roving dinosaurs and marauding bands of lizard men, I'd only charge them 500 bucks a night, with all they could drink for free. Of course, to keep my location secret, I'd have to terminate them in the morning, security and all that, but otherwise, Xanadoom at the center of the Earth is a far more desirable vacation spot than the Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel ever was. And that is why they failed. <laughs> Greetings, my friends. I am Dictor Van Doomcock, the future ruler of Earth, and I am here today to discuss something my Hollywood spies uncovered regarding the fate of the Disney Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel. Although this horrible and overpriced hotel crashed and burned and shuttered their doors at the end of September, there are rumblings that Iger may be seeking to salvage some kind of profit from the wreckage of Kathleen Kennedy's dream, but I can tell you, she is not going to like what my Hollywood spies tell me Disney is planning for her little pet project. Which means, of course, that fans may like it a lot. Now, as all of you know from my previous videos, the Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel was a doomed folly from its inception, thanks to Kathleen Kennedy. Initially, when it came to establishing a Star Wars section in the Disney theme parks, the Disney Imagineers were shooting for a land with multiple attractions from the original Star Wars trilogy. You know, Tatooine, Hoth, the Death Star, a good range of rides and attractions from that galaxy far, far away that we fans fell in love with. Sketches survive of what was proposed, and one heart skips a beat when one contemplates just how much fun such a land could have been. Enter the Wicked Witch of the Woke, Kathleen Kennedy, who it seems to me from everything she's done, hates Star Wars. And its little dog, too. When she got wind of these plans, she stuck her pointy hat into the offices and said, No, that's not what we want. Like Robert Stack in Airplane, when asked, shouldn't we turn on the runway lights for the incoming emergency plane landing in the dark? Stack replied, no, no, that's just what they're expecting us to do. When Kennedy heard they were building a Star Wars theme park that would have Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader in it, KK said, no, that's just what fans are expecting us to do. She wasn't going to use characters and settings the fans actually liked. I mean, ew, right? No. She made Galaxy's Edge a massive failure by focusing on the sequel trilogy characters that no one gives a shit about. And then to make things even worse, she doubled down on her sequel trilogy mistake by centering the Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel on Rey and Kylo. The level of incompetence was staggering, and it couldn't possibly get worse. Oh, it got worse, dude. For the pleasure of being in a tiny hotel room with no windows and no real Star Wars in it, you had to pay 6000 bucks for 45 hours of what laughably passed for fun in that place. No wonder it went on its final galactic star cruise at the end of September, less than a month ago. Goodbye to billions of dollars in R&D and construction expenses. The damn thing lasted only a year and a half before crashing not with a bang. But a whimper. <laughs> but now Iger may have found a way to salvage something from the wreckage. And if this is true, 
Kennedy is going to pitch a fit, and it'll be another sign that her power at Lucasfilm is severely diminished, if not eliminated. At this point, I must state that what I'm about to tell you is information provided to me by my Hollywood spies, but since I cannot personally confirm this information, I am presenting it as unverified rumor, and I ask you to please take it with a grain of salt. So The Wrap recently published an article discussing a very interesting survey that was given to the final batch of Voyagers on the last Disney's Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel cruise towards the end of September. Quoting from that article, Walt Disney World News Today summarized what The Wrap had discovered in an article titled, Disney Survey Suggests Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel May Be Resurrected. And in that article, they write, Quote, Guests who were part of the final voyages aboard the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser received a survey that suggests Disney is reconsidering shuttering the immersive experience completely according to the wrap. The immersive hotel experience shut its doors on September 30th, 2023, closing less than two years after its opening. Guests who were passengers on its final voyages received an unusually specific survey that suggests to some that current Disney CEO Bob Iger and other Disney executives may be rethinking their decision to shutter the Star Cruiser completely. In the survey, questions asked appeared to point to a desire to rework the experience and reopen as a more affordable and streamlined offering." Unquote. Apparently, this survey was drilling down into the guest experience, breaking it down into various components, dividing the overall experience into four sections, pre-arrival, on board, in your room, and overall. They also asked people to tell them about any experiences they had that were particularly memorable or defined their vacation aboard the crashing and burning Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel. The article concludes, quote, with these specific questions, it is possible that Disney could be looking to revive this experience in some form at a lesser cost, or simply could be trying to exit this thing with as much data as possible, as one designer said to the rap, unquote. Well, as it turns out, my friends, they may not have been wrong in making this guess. My Hollywood spies contacted me with the following report brought to them by sources with knowledge of the matter, and I can tell you this, if this rumor is true, it's a huge win for fans, a huge plate of crow for Disney, and a big raised middle finger to Kathleen Kennedy as well. Here's what my Hollywood spy said, quote, Okay, there's a lot of buzz around this, so let's get to it. According to sources, the Star Cruiser may not get completely demolished. Don't misunderstand, this may be a bigger victory for us, let me explain. As we understand it, there's a possibility that Bob Iger has changed his mind on what to do with the Star Cruiser. To do a quick recap on what our old information was, in order for Disney to get the full tax break, Disney had or has to demolish the cruiser 100% to get 100% of the tax break offset. Now, the new information. According to multiple sources inside the park itself and the story is very consistent, Bob Iger sees this as too big of a black eye and has instead opted for another approach. The new plan is to give the cruiser a full makeover and turn it into basically laser tag. So how is this a bigger victory? According to every source so far, the planned laser tag is going to be based off of the New Hope Vader boarding the Rebel ship to get the plans for the Death Star scenes. The idea is red versus green, aka Empire versus Rebels, the color with the most dead wins. If this is true, and we have more information that links to Galaxy's Edge that we are still digging into this, could possibly be a pivotal moment. We have more, but we are still working on getting more details, but we believe hashtag Doomcock was right will be trending again soon, unquote. Well, this would definitely be a rebuke to KK's vision for Star Wars. And by vision, I mean plan to raise it to the ground and poop on its ashes. You're right, Doomcock. If they turn the ruins of the hotel into a Star Wars themed laser tag experience, 
Rebels vs. Stormtroopers with Vader running around, all taking place aboard the Tanti 4, which will be the Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel remodeled to reflect the designs from the original Star Wars. Well, shit, that's a huge win for fans, which is something KK would hate. So are you saying this would no longer be a hotel, just another destination for an afternoon of fun? That's not entirely clear, Skull of Calderon. Obviously, they have the rooms and the infrastructure for bathrooms, plumbing, and whatnot, so they might be tempted to make it a big two-day event, with Princess Leia, R2-D2, C-3PO constantly on the run from Vader's Imperial Star Destroyer. Maybe the guests could be gunners against TIE Fighter scouts looking for them. Then the big ship shows up. They simulate the docking of the Tantive Four with the Star Destroyer, blowing the doors, pew pew, and Darth Vader skulking around. I could see this as actually being kind of fun, my friends. Although at this point, the popularity of Star Wars is at an all-time low, and hatred for the Walt Disney Corporation is at an all-time high, thanks to their blundering into political issues and terrible, terrible quality control and destroying their own legacy by remaking all their animated classics. So overall, I believe this may be too little, too late. But it is interesting in that if they do go in this direction, it will mean they finally recognize the error of KK's ways and are ready to steer Disney's flagship, the SS Titanic screw-up, away from the iceberg of failure. We'll stay on this story, my friends. But until then, stay angry. And please check to make sure you are still subscribed.